interface. So today we're going to take a look at what interfaces are, how to use them, how we implement an interface and actually use it with a contract and why it is important. Now, first off, what is an interface? And I would like you to think about an interface as a blueprint. Um, we could have interfaces that define how a contract should look, what functions it should contain, and that way we get to create some sort of standard. Now, before we look at how to implement our own interface, let's just understand that some interfaces are very popular and is used as a type of standard in the Ethereum uh, ecosystem. So example, you know, here we have a bunch of standards and one of the popular standards are the 721, the ERC 721 non-fungible token standard. If this all is a bit too technical to understand right now, don't worry. Just understand that an interface at the core is like a template, um, a blueprint to say, how do you need to implement a certain standard? In this case, if anyone wants to make an NFT, a non-fungible token, especially an ERC, they need to implement this interface. And this will allow platforms and marketplaces to know that this contract, this NFT that implements this interface will have some of the features that we see over here, like a transfer event, a balance of function, a owner of function. And these are just the kind of blueprints of the functions. They are not implementations. We just say that whatever contract is implementing this interface should have these uh, functions. And this is a great way to create uh, uniformity right in the space by creating the set in stone standards. Now let's take a step back and look at our code example, our pizza contract. First of all, for this example, I'm gonna rename my contract to be uh, maybe pizza place. Now I hope this is not an existing pizza place, but this is just an example. And in the actual contract over here, it's called my new contract. I'm gonna rename this to be pizza place as well. Now let's imagine that these pizza places, each contract that we ever deploy onto the blockchain will be a franchise of a new pizza store around the world. Now to create uniformity and to make sure that each franchise complies to the pizza places uh, rules, in our case, the variables and maybe the type of functions that we need a pizza place to have, we can create a type of pizza place interface. And we're going to call that I pizza place. Now an interface doesn't need to live in the same uh, file, but it can. And that's what I'm exactly going to do here at the top. So we don't jump around files and it's great for quick referencing. So let's quickly start by typing in interface. And this is how we can define a new interface. And I'm going to call this I pizza place. Now it's very important um, to understand that this is not convention. You don't need to put an I in front of your interfaces. It's just good for me to know because then I can distinguish between the actual contract and what is an interface. So now our interface is technically there and we can implement it on our pizza place contract. How do we do that? Well, we typically say here at the end of the contract's name that this contract is implementing the I pizza place. And you can see that everything is still the same. No errors, nothing, because there is really no hard coded blueprints for this pizza place to really implement. Currently, we're saying there is no real rules. You can just implement whatever you want in your pizza place. But we want to make it more strict. Now, before we stipulate what kind of features and functions a pizza place would need, it's important to note that the implementation, the logic on how it works is not described by the interface. We simply as the business would say that, for example, each pizza place at least needs a place order function because the business will require to call it at some time. How it's implemented is up to the developer. Let's take our place order function and actually add that to our interface. So here we are going to say that a pizza place at least needs a place order function. And we can see we have a tiny error and that just simply says that a function 
uh, inner interface must be declared as external. So let's do that. And now we can see the error is away and our contract is good. I think another function that we should definitely include is the delivered function because uh, that is something all of the pizza places should technically have. So we will make this external as well. Perfect. So now we have an I pizza place interface and we're saying that each pizza place will be uh, implementing this I pizza place interface. Now, very important, currently it looks like nothing has changed, but let's take a look from a developer's point of view. Let's say they started off coding this new contract and they've implemented their logic and they are implementing this pizza place interface. Let's say they left out completely the place order function. We can now see that there's an error here at the top. And this is a big error, but essentially it comes down to this line, missing implementation of the iPizza place interface. And it tells us that it needs this place order function to exist in the contract. So let's go ahead and put that back. And then we'll see the error is gone. And that is kind of why interfaces are really important. Now there's a lot more to interfaces and how to implement them and write your own ones like we just did right now but that's a bit more advanced and for now i just want you to understand why sometimes we're going to be implementing uh, an interface and why it's important to use them in the future so as you follow your journey with solidity you'll start understanding them a bit better but this is the starting point